Oh, is that the coding train I see coming along the tracks? Oh, I wonder what it's brought us today. Oh, look, it's the game 2048. So this is a much, uh, much requested and often uh, not, a, not whatever the opposite of requested is, uh, suggested that I don't attempt this uh, coding challenge. M many of you watching this are probably familiar with this game. If you are not, this game is a uh, sliding block puzzle uh, created by the developer Gabrielle Cerulli, written in a weekend. It became extraordinarily popular. It is now actually open source. You can go and check out the code that is written in a excellent way, I'm sure, much better than whatever code that I'm going to write in this video. This, of course, is a game that is uh, very similar to Threes um, uh, and another game, 1024. So there's a lot of, this, this game comes from a long line of sliding puzzle add numbers together. I can't believe I'm still wearing this. Um, uh, games. So what am I doing here? So I have attempted to make my own version of the game and I really what I've discovered in this process, which I've already completed, this, and you can see how ugly mine is compared to this one, is that object-oriented programming would really help me because one of the main things that's missing right now, ooh, look at this, not from here, because look at this beautiful, look at all these beautiful animations, is I don't have any animations. But I have the functionality of the game. I even have some, some little things in here that you could learn from, perhaps. I don't know. So, oh, this is why I'm here. This took like a long time and I had a lot of problems and I couldn't solve a whole bunch of things that you would think that I would be able to solve, but I really had trouble with them. And the coding challenge is apparently, it's in something like um, 2048 parts. So it's actually right now, it's only in four parts. If I come back and do the animation software, it'll be five parts. If you can make it through all of these parts, um, I will, um, I don't know if I could somehow give you a medal, I would, that would be amazing. But I would love to hear your feedback, um, get your suggestions for improvements. You can make your own version of this game or your own twist on this game and you could submit it at thecodingtrain.com. Instructions are there, link in this video's description for how to do that. So part one is pretty long, parts two and three are kind of short, and part four, we, we don't speak. We don't speak about the part four. <laughs> we don't speak about the part four. So um, enjoy, I hope to see you. Sometime again in the future, I'm going to go take a trip on the uh, coding train to the in the corner and wonder what I'm doing with my life train. Goodbye. <laughs> so, what is the core? Let's let me first before I get started coding. I really am very pessimistic about this. Let's let me try to talk through my understanding of how the game works and what kind of code stuff I might need. Um, all right. So the game, by definition is played on a four by four grid. Now again, there are obviously variations of this. This is not, there are, there are predecessors to 2048 of the same game with slightly different designs and flavors and ideas. But um, the core idea of the 2048 game is four by four grid. Uh, it starts, I think, with two random spots filled in with either a two or a four. Um, and then you can press a key, right? up, left, down. Obviously on a mobile or touch version you can swipe and you send all the values. So if I swipe to the right, I send all the values this way. So the two and the four would end up here. Then maybe a new value pops in. If a two pops in here and I swipe to the right again, numbers that are the same will combine. So these twos will combine into a four. And so let's go back and look at that. And we can kind of see, let's see that happening here, right? As I press down, nothing happens. I press the left, everything moves to the left. The four moves to the left at two. Uh, let me move that two up. And then let me move that over. Those two 16s will combine and those two twos will combine and these two twos will combine. There we go. Now I can go down. So you get the idea. <laughs> so what do I need? Well, actually, interestingly enough, all I need to figure out is if I have basically for, you know, I have a matrix, a two-dimensional array, but it's really just an array of arrays and I did too many of them. <laughs> so if I have four, if I can figure out how to just condense things to one direction, one direction, <laughs> then uh, I don't know any one direction songs, otherwise I would have started like singing as a joke, but I don't actually I know the, the name one direction. Anyway, I'm more of like a 98, Degree, 98 degrees? I don't even remember. Whatever was in the like 1940s when I was a teenager. Okay, so um, what was I talking about? Oh yes, 2048. If I can just get them 
figure out how to do it in one direction, <laughs> then if, if the user or the player presses up, I could kind of just rotate the whole thing and go in that direction. So, so let's, let's see if we can figure this out. All right, so let's start writing some code. I'm going to say, I'm going to have a variable called grid. And guess what? I'm just going to hard code it. I feel okay with that. Do you feel okay with that? I'm going to say, what is it? It's going to start as it needs, it's basically this, right? I need to have four arrays of zeros. And let's see if, yeah, there we go. This is, that's the 2048 board. I could try to say like new array and fill and map and all that stuff. Uh, all these like, but this is going to work. There we go. So now, what do I need to do first? The first thing that I need to do is for each, um, is um, let's write a function to do this, is add, add num, add, I don't know what to add spot, I don't know what to call this, add number. So what the add number function should do is it should pick a random location that does not already, that has a zero, and it should add a two or a four there. So what I'll do is, uh, um, so first I should check, first I need to check, is the whole board full of everything that's not, is there, are there any zero spots? So let's make a list of all of the, in, all the possible spots that I can add. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to make a, an array called options. And now what I'm going to do is, oh, could I use, to get the index values out. I'm just going to loop through it. Uh, so I'm going to use i and j. I kind of have this idea that I'm going to use all these fancy array functions. <laughs> I'm just going to loop through it. i and j. And I'm going to say, if grid i j equals 0, this is a valid spot, options dot push. And I'll just make a little array with i and j, uh, i and j in it. Oh, maybe I'll make an object. X, i, y, j. Okay? So I'm going to put a little object in that array. Now what I'm going to do is, once I'm done, I'm going to say let spot equal a random option. So if options.length is greater than zero, then I can pick a spot, and then I'm going to say grid spot.x, spot.y, spot.y equals, uh, um, and I can, I basically want to pick, uh, I either want to pick a two or a four. So I can use a ternary operator. Ooh, I'm, I'm just, I'm gone totally nuts today. Which basically what a ternary operator does is it says, okay, I'm going to pick a random number. And, okay, well, hold on. I'm going to pick a random number. R is a random number between 0 and 1. And I'm going to say, is R greater than 0.5? If it is, give me a 2. Otherwise, give me a 4. I think, and I don't know. If this should be in parentheses or not, I don't think I need it. So this is a nice little way of just giving me, based on whether r is greater than 0.5, give me a 2 or a 4. I could have written an if statement, but everybody always complains when I don't use the ternary operator, so I'm going to try using it, and who knows if I got it right. So let's, in setup, I'm going to say console.log table. I'm going to say add number, add number, and console.table grid. Console.table is a really nice way to display a, an array in the browser, in the, in the JavaScript console in the browser. So let me do this. So I can say, look at that. Look at that. Let's do it again. Two and two. Two and two. All right. So in a way, like, oh, I almost want to oh, just do this, the entire thing in the console and not draw anything. Because I could just do the whole thing in the console and play the game. But I think it's going to be much easier if I can represent what we're seeing in the console in the canvas. So let's put that into draw. So here, I'm going to, this is my nested loop that I'm going to be using constantly. And I am going to first draw a rectangle. And I guess the, the size is always going to be the width divided by 4. 
you know, I think I can probably for right now just say it's 100. Like I can hard code a lot of stuff because it's 400 by 400, refactor later. <laughs> and so I'm going to draw a rectangle at i times w, j times w, w, w. And I'm going to say uh, no fill, stroke weight two, stroke zero, and let's make the background 255. And I should see a nice grid now. There we go. I've got my nice grid. Now what I should do, and this is almost like too big. I don't need that much space. Okay. Now, and I'm going to move this over a little bit so I'm not standing in front of it so much. Um, I am going to, now I should also say if a grid i j is not equal to zero, I could draw the number there. Now, Let's just use the text function in P5. So I'm going to say text align center, text, um, I want to draw the value. So I, I should actually just, let me get the value. The value is grid I, J. And uh, so I'm going to draw that value at I times W minus W divided by two. That's kind of like the center j times w minus j divided by 2, w divided by 2. What does that do? And I'm going to say text size 64. I don't know. Fill 0, no stroke. This should be rendering it. And I should, I should just put this in its own function just to kind of like get out of here. Function uh, draw grid. And I'll call that in draw. So let's see how this goes. Hey, that's not so horrible. I've seen worse. So let's uh, minus w divided by 4 about. Oops. Oh, what happened here? j times, oh, wait, wait, wait. Does the text draw from, let's see this. So I'm seeing a 4, I'm, oh, interestingly, I am seeing things in the wrong differently than I'm seeing them here because the way that I'm treating columns and rows. And I think I'm drawing stuff above. So it actually should be j times w plus w divided by 2. Um, why do I sometimes get one thing? Text align, oh, text align center, center. That's what I meant to do. Thank you. Text align center, center. There we go. I knew there was, that's what I wanted to do. But why am I sometimes getting only one number? Hold on. Let's say I, let's actually draw the, uh, let's draw the uh, coordinates. Look at me. I have everything shifted over wrong. That's clearly the problem. So my x location is i times uh, i times w minus plus. What am I doing with the minus for? It's a plus. Oh, I lost my mind. Oh, what a terrible error. That's much better. <laughs> Sorry you had to sit through that. So now it's fine. And now I can put the value there. There we go. So now this should work. This is my opening board no matter what. Whew, okay, we're getting there. 2048, here we come. So now, what's the deal? I'm just gonna say, for right now, whenever I hit the space bar, I'm gonna send everything to the right. Okay, so let's think about this. There's, if I have an array of numbers, and there's so many different ways you could approach this problem, and I'm sure I'm not going to do it in the most efficient or sensical way. But the first thing that I would do, like let's say, let's say this is the, the, the row. The first thing that I would do is just pack everything to the right so that any empty spots would be left on the left side. So let's first do that. So that's, let's write a function called slide. And I'm going to give it an argument a row. Now, I know that I probably am mixing up my rows and columns. I'll have to figure that out later. But I'm going to assume row is just a single array. And what I want to do is I want to look through. I'm going to take that row and I want to um, filter out. I could use filter to 
I mean, it's sort of silly. I just want to move everything over if it's not a zero. So let's try using, let's, let's try using some array functions. I'm going to say row equals, I'm going to want to return. I'm going to, so I'm going to want to return an array. So array equals um, row.filter. So this is actually going to keep everything that is not a zero in the same order. This is kind of crazy, but filter is a function that takes any value, and let me just, um, and that, and that this does a true or false test. So see, then I'm gonna say return array. So first I'm just gonna, uh, oh no, no, and then what I need to do is I need to say, um, I need to add to, I need to add however many, so whatever, however many of the array, so like the, Missing is, oh, I could just sort, no, I can't sort it. <laughs> um, missing equals uh, four minus array dot length. And I'm just going to, um, um, I'm gonna say let um, zeros equal an array of missing size uh, filled with zeros. And then I should be able to just say uh, array dot put now what how do you put something on the front of the array push would go on the back uh, which maybe is fine because I could be sliding that other way <laughs> just be sliding the other way so I'm gonna say push uh, the zeros and then return the array let's let me just test this function out right so the idea here uh, and let me get rid of this console um, this uh, con console.table stuff. Where is that? Yeah. I don't need that anymore. So let's say I have an, let's say I want to say slide and my array is 0, 0, 2, 4. Ah, okay. So push doesn't do that. It doesn't push. I, I, I'd use concat maybe? Concat. Uh, where's my slide? Um, array concat zeros. No. Oh, it makes a new array. It makes a new array. Okay. So I need to say array equals array concat zeros. <laughs> okay. There we go. Now let's take a look at this. Let's get out of here. Go back to here. Oh, this is a there we go. It slides everything to the left. Yeah. And let's just try some others. Slide uh, four zero. Two, four. Four, two. Okay, so that's good. Everything's going that way, which is fine. I don't care which direction. That's fine with me. So now I should say every time I press a key, I'm just gonna use the space bar right now. If key key equals space, what I want to do is loop over. loop over the grid and say grid index i equals slide grid index i, right? So this is sliding them over for each one. Oh, they're going up. <laughs> so that's great. So after I do that, right, each time I, have, each time I play, play the game, like this is, one, this is one move, so to speak, then I should add a number again. Add another two or a four randomly. Great. This appears to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. Be nice to have an animation, but there is no animation. Now there's no more room left. That's fine. Okay. Okay. All right. So now I need to combine. So just like I have this slide function, now I need a combine function. So assuming that I've slid everything one way or the other, what I need to do is if there are two that match starting from the back, they should be combined into one number. All right. I know this is where I ran into a problem before. Someone's, I'm going to need somebody who's watching this live to help me. Oh, if nothing moves, no tiles should be added. Okay, okay. I'm going to get to that later. Yes, so that's a part of the game. We don't, if, if you're done, you, if, if nothing can move, you can't add another tile. But I will, I will, I will I, remind me I need to fix that. I need to fix that at some point. So let's do combine. So if I have a row, 
what I want to do, can I use reduce, <laughs> filter, and I could loop through it for sure. So let's, let me try doing this very manually right now. Let me loop from the back. Right? Let me loop from the back all the way down. And first I want to say, um, and I actually just want to go to here, because I want to say um, uh, A is the, this one, right? the current one that I'm at, like the last one, and B is row I minus 1. And if A equals B, then row I should equal A plus B, and row I minus 1 should equal 0. And then I shouldn't do any more, so I'm going to say break. So this is, I, again, I'm going to need to do more, but this, and this is probably a way for me to write this shorter, but I'm just going to go from the back and check the last two, like I'm going to check so if this is, so if it got, I, I've already slid everything, so if it's like this, I'm going to check this one versus this one. If they're the same, this becomes 0 and this becomes 4. Now, if this were here, I still have to do more. I've got to slide again, but let's see here. Now, I should be able to, now I should say, uh, where am I? I want to slide the grid. Oh, and so hold on. Uh, oh, I'm actually operating on the row itself. So in this case, I don't need to, I'm up, this is a little bit, this is a little awkward. I'm making a new array to send back, and here I'm operating on that array. So this is a bit awkward, but I'm just going to remember that. Uh, so I'm just going to write a comments. Operating on array itself. Um, making new array. And so now I'm going to say, after I slide, I'm going to combine. So I'm going to combine. Let's see if this works. Uh, OK, I forget what I just pressed. Spacebar, and everything goes up. Oh, boy. Error, error. Cannot read property zero of undefined at add number sketch.js line 20. Sketch.js line 20. If grid. Oh, add number. Oh, oh, I messed up something. Oh, because silly me, <laughs> silly me if I am not returning. This is terrible. So let me actually just say return the row. Even though it's the same array, I can return a reference to itself, and that's going to fix it. Now, here's the thing. This is, I don't think this is working. So those two should combine to be a four. They're not at the moment. And something weird is going on. So let me look at my code again. All right, let me, be try, to, let me try to be smart about this here. And let, let's try to do some work in the console. So if I say combine 0, 4, 2, 2, that's right. 0, 4, 2, 2. Those two get combined. Now I need to slide that. Slide 0, 4, 0, 4. Uh, and that slid the other way. So I'm combining the opposite way that I'm sliding, which is definitely a problem. Um, so maybe what I should do is just slide the other way around, um, which would be, um, let me think about this. I could just reverse it, <laughs> right? Uh, but that's probably a bad idea. What I should just do is, um, Right? I could, no, no, no. I can just say zeros concat array, right? <laughs> I could just put the zeros on the other side. Yeah, that should do it, right? So now, if I say combine 0422, 0404, then slide 0044. OK, this seems right now. So now hit spacebar. 8, yep, it slid down. 2, 4, 2. Two, two, four. Yep, yep. Okay, this is working now. <laughs> okay, now I'm sure there's going to be lots of scenarios that aren't correct. 
So what I need to do also is after I combine, where we need to slide again. Right, because, and so really what I, what I kind of want is, I need a, I, 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 operate row, row equals operate on the row. So let me make this one function where I get an array and I say uh, uh, row equals slide, row equals combine, row equals slide, and then return row. So I just want to do this in a function. I mean, this, well, in some ways, this is kind of silly what I'm doing here. But I just want this to be a separate function so I can call it myself. So now, oops, sketch.48, return. I forgot my R. OK. So now, what I want to do is I want to say operate on 0, 0, 2, 2. That should now be 0, 0, 0, 4. Uh, operate is not defined. I didn't refresh. I is not defined. Oh, silly me. These are no longer grid index I. These are row. Okay, we're, we're moving along here. Operate. Ah, that's good. Okay, operate. That's right. Now, here's what's going to be wrong. Right? This now should be 0, 0, 4, 4. Is that correct? So I need to do it one more time. But I need to be careful because this should not go to 8. So how do I consider those two as different scenarios? I mean, certainly, right, if I just run this again, it can only happen twice because there's only four spots. But this isn't going to be correct because like this, oh, I didn't, did I refresh? This gave me the correct response, but this is going to give me the incorrect. This should be 0, 2, 4, this would be 0, 2, 4, 4. And I got 0, 2, 0, 8 because the 4 and the 4 combined. So I suppose what I could do is the second time I do combine, I, the second time I do combine, I could start from the second to last spot. Right? Just start from the second to last spot. Or do combine twice before sliding. That's an interesting idea. Will this actually do the trick? So let's say operate 2422. Two, two. 0244. Two, four. That is correct. Oh, interesting. Can anybody, let me think of, I think that actually worked. Are there any other scenarios that wouldn't work? Like operate 0224. Uh, two, let's try this one. This should be 0004. Zero, 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 ah, that's not right. Oh, is that, or is this correct? This is, this wouldn't work, right? This should give me 0044, zero, four, four, right? It is 0044. Zero, four, four. So the break, um, so actually, am I just being silly and I just need to do combine once but get rid of the break? And um, so let me think about this. Look, let's look at the combine. If I get rid of the break, ah, so I think here's what I could do. So let's, let's say I have, this is the case that's a little bit weird. I have uh, 0, 4, 2, 2. If I do this, and now try to combine again and then slide, these won't go together. But, and if I do this, then I, this should give me 
0, 4, 0, 4, and then sly, they will go together. So I think, I'm thinking this through, I think that I can actually, I knew I, get rid of the break and just combine, call combine once and call slide again after. That's correct. That's correct. What was another one of my scenarios? And that is correct. <laughs> the break is so silly. I thought I was being smart by getting out of there, but actually I just need to combine everything and then slide everything. Ha 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 ha. Okay, wonderful. I, I think we're just about kind of done. <laughs> right? So now I need to, oops, uh-oh, what did I do? Row is not defined a key pressed. Oh yeah, I messed something up. Where's that line 38? Oh, look at silly me. These are grid index i. And down here, I'm passing it into row, so they're row here. Very silly thing that I've done here. Okay, so now hit space. Yep. This to me is the behavior of the game. Now, here's the thing. Yeah, here's the thing. I shouldn't be adding numbers if nothing moved. So one thing I have to check is if anything moved. So one thing that I might do is um, right here, I might create, what I, what I think I'd like to do is let past equal copy grid. So let me make a function, copy grid, where past, um, equals, this is very silly, but I'm just going to do this. Past equals a new, a new uh, two-dimensional array, and then uh, our copy, new, no, no, uh, grid, extra, I'm going to call it extra, extra equals a new copy, and then I'm just going to, for, I'm going to use my nested loop, which I have somewhere else, I'm sure I could just use slice or something, but I just don't have it within me right now. Why did I do 2048? Extra i j equals grid i j. Okay, so I'm just, and then I'm going to say return extra. So that's just a total copy of the two-dimensional array. So past, so past is, past is now a copy, and now this is the new grid. So I can check to see if anything changed. So uh, I can say changed equals compare, copy, and grid. Okay, so I'm going to write another function. This is all very silly, but called compare, where I have two different matrices. And I'm going to say if A does not equal to B, return Something changed. Return true. So true means something changed. I'm going to check every spot. As soon as something's not equal, something moved. And then if I get all the way to the end, I'll just return false. So now I should only add a number if changed. Now add a number. Okay. Here we go. Oops. So P5 doesn't like that I called something copy. So I'm going to call this copy grid. And I'm going to do this. So now I should be able to say, whoops, oh, cannot read property zero of undefined at compare, sketch.js line 37. Um, so A and B in compare. Oh, and this is called, this should be passed. <laughs> this is why I shouldn't use the word copy. This is past. That should be past. Okay, no, nothing's moving, so I don't get a new number. Nothing's moving, so I don't get a new number. Got a new number, got a new number, got a new number, got a new number. Nothing's moving, got a new number. All right.
So ends part one of 2048, where I have the entire game mechanic, but only for going in one direction. One direction. I'm going to take a short break and have a part two to the 2048 challenge, where I deal with the rotation of the matrix. I, and I hope you enjoy watching that part, and then the game will be finished.